Please welcome to the show, Will Ferrell. Hello, sir. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. How are things? Mm. Thank you. That warm ovation. It's much warmer than being in a curling rink across Canada. <laughs> it is, but the kilt, wearing a kilt is much warmer than you'd think it would be. Yeah. Yeah. It really depends on how true to the form you are. Are you covered under or not? That's key. I uh, was wearing boxers. <laughs> That's all right. Because I thought it'd be chilly, but uh, the Scots knew what they were doing. That material really yeah. traps the, the heat <laughs> in there, and then I went from being cold to actually sweating. Right. In that region of my body. Right. <laughs> Do you always in your head imagine there would be another Ron Burgundy movie? Anchorman movie? Uh, never. Yeah, we, um, we never really envisioned ever doing sequels of our movies just because we had original stories to tell. Um, so, but Anchorman wouldn't go away. They just kind of sat on the shelf and got more and more popular over the years. And, and we finally, finally were like, Maybe we should make a sequel. And, and what would be more fun than bringing Ron Burgundy back? And also bringing Ron Burgundy back in a way where you can make kind of a nice social statement and a political statement at the yeah. dawn of 24-hour news, right? Yeah, we, uh, the movie's set in 1980, which uh, we forget that's the, that's the first year for CNN and for ESPN and all these 24-hour channels started kind of beginning that year. And it's kind of a perfect place to put, to put Ron and the news team trying to figure out what to do, and 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 we kind of get to, we kind of get to uh, comment on on how the news is today at the same time. Funny or Die has been a great platform for yeah. social commentary. You've done stuff in the political realm before. H how do you know in your heart when it's the time to do something, where it's not just about a laugh, that there's a message behind it or, or a point behind it? I think it just kind of strikes you in the moment. Uh, you know, I I, I think there. You know, I, I obviously just love being funny for funny's sake, but there, there are other moments where you, you see an opportunity to kind of uh, be satirical and subversive and, uh, and still make people laugh, but, but I, I don't, you know, I don't know if there's an exact formula. You just, a certain event may happen and, and a certain attitude may be out there that you want to kind of circle and, and put a, put a spotlight on, and, and those are the times to do it. Did, in, in your home, did you, when you were growing up, was that ever part of the conversation? Were you, did you watch your folks talk about news or families talk about world events? Not really, because uh, my parents didn't talk to me. Um, <laughs> they refused to until I started making money. <laughs> Where'd you find that? Huh? How about that? Holy Toledo. <laughs> I am going to have this amazing reaction and not share it with the audience at all <laughs> as to why I'm reacting this way. Uh, this, is, this is crazy. This is crazy, right? This is, uh, I don't know what camera I should show this to. We'll find it. This is my father. This yeah. is a country western album my dad did, Lee Farrell, Hard Times. I knew your dad Amazing had... graphics, way ahead of its time. Oh, look at this, a letter. there's a letter in there, uh, dude. Boy, that's oh, totally, look, look at that letter, man, promoting it. I knew your dad had played with the Righteous Brothers, wow, but I didn't how know. How did you track this down? We got a team, man. It's a good one. You've got a good team. Want to see it? Watch this video. Watch this okay. clip. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now that. It's uh, Muscle Beach Party. Yeah, Muscle Beach Party. That's right. And my dad's playing saxophone with Stevie Wonder. With Stevie Wonder and. Uh, and Dick Dale. Yeah. And, uh, One of my first interviews. That, that's amazing. Yeah, my dad, uh, for those of you in the audience, uh, my father is, is a lifelong musician, and he got, he finally got his break. He got discovered in the nightclub he was playing in, and this guy said, let's, I want to, I want to have you record a country western album. And he flew him to Nashville, and, and it turns out, and it was a brand new label, but then it turns out that the label was all like a, a tax shelter or something, and they got busted, and the record never got distributed, so. And there it is, there's only anyway. a few copies around. It really was hard times. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave you good advice when he got into he this business, amazing. right? Yeah, he did, yeah. Um, I sat down when I decided that I was gonna, you know, go for it and, and try to jump into comedy. I sat down with my father and I said, do you have any advice? And, and he said, uh, you know, if it was strictly about talent, I wouldn't worry about you, but just 
remember that there's a lot of luck involved and uh, and that give it a shot and if you don't get to the point where you want to to be at if you aren't satisfied it's okay to it's actually okay to walk away and and for some reason that took the pressure off of ever trying to succeed and I, th I thought well this is such a crapshoot I might as well have fun and <laughs> and here we are now Who do you guys think you are? We're the real Beastie Boys, mother The ones from the future where the is really real. Yeah, guess what? That makes zero sense. <laughs> we're the real Beastie Boys. No, we're the real Beastie Boys. <laughs> and Saturday Night Live, weren't enough, right? Like, I know New York is famous for lots of things, and SNL is an institution, but the Beastie Boys, that's an institution yeah. in New York. Yeah, when, when you get the call from the Beastie Boys <clears throat> to be in their video, uh, which ended up being their, their last one, in a way, um, uh, that was a, a magical day, and, uh, um, and to have all of them there, and, and yeah, we kind of couldn't believe it. You were in, used in a Kanye song before with the Beastie Boys. There's a lot of hip hop in your life. Is, yeah, is that... I mean, I'm pretty hip hop. You know, you have to be. When man. you look at me, you think he's badass. Yeah, yeah. Is being in that Kanye Jay Z song the only time you've been referenced in something that you can't comfortably publicly say the title of the song? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in, in that uh, N words in, with in, Paris. In words, you know, N words from Paris. <laughs> And it makes you sound even whiter when you say it that way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. So I know about your father, and we know about you and your story, and your brother's made appearances in your stuff, but uh, tell me about your mother. You I don't hear much I'd about I'd rather her. not. Yeah? Um, no, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell me no, something. No, my mom, you know, my, my mother it was, you know, uh, a, a huge figure in my life, a single mom who kind of really... Uh, Instilled values in us in terms of uh, in terms of work ethic and uh, uh, you know she was she's a she's a big hero of mine you know she put herself through grad school while we were um, you know uh, and working odd, the oddest jobs to pay for it you know she was she was a she was a job she had a job called a, she was a plant lady where she'd go to offices and take care of plants and just the most bizarre stuff <laughs> but probably with the dignity yeah. that's, that's with dignity yeah. exactly it's 10 years this christmas of elf oh, the 10th yeah. year anniversary of elf that's cr it's crazy i mean i remember running around in new york in a in that outfit <laughs> literally thinking this is the end this is the end of this is the end of my career really yeah and uh, in pointy shoes and in tights what does that feel and... like when you're having that conversation with yourself yeah, I, I, mean, I, I just knew it was a big roll of the dice. I, I really, I loved this concept of a, of a human raised at the North Pole who thinks he's an elf yeah. and finds out he isn't. But, you know, I had just come off of old school, this R-rated, you know, crazy man's comedy, and now I'm doing this family Christmas movie. <laughs> and I, I, I knew it was either gonna really work or really fail. What do you make of the Rob Ford scenario? So you have this funny moment with him and then all of a sudden it blows up. Right. <laughs> what do you think when you watch the tapes back on? Oh, God. Well, you know, Ron's got a mind of his own. So, uh, Ron Burgundy yeah. in his support of Rob. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, I just think it's, it's really fascinating that this, this cultured city, Toronto, has Chris Farley as his mayor. <laughs> We hope, we hope without the tragic ending. When you're doing, when you're, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, when you're yeah, doing yeah. bits and you know that, yeah. I watch the late night comedy guys do this with all the states. When you're dealing with a guy and you're not sure what his real state is, how do you approach that kind of material? Um, you know, you usually just, unfortunately, you usually just dive in and you probably don't think about those ramifications. Because uh, I, I, I mean, I think the, the one thing you have to be completely in comedy is fearless, and uh, and once you kind of make a decision to to make whatever choice you're going to make, you can't look back. 
Really good to see you, man. Thank yeah, you for your time. Yeah, you too. All right. Thanks for everybody. Anchorman 2, the legend continues.